In this video, I'm going to show you how to work the first few rows of neck shaping in my azalea top. The things you'll learn in this video are how to bind off in the middle of a row. This creates the bottom portion of the neckline. And then I'll work a few rows of the neck shaping, which I use the sloped bind off method for. I'm using my azalea top here as the example, but this technique is similar with other patterns as well. So let's get started. In Azalea, on row 10, it says to knit to the first ne neck marker. So I just have a couple of more stitches to do before I reach the neck marker. Then you will remove the marker. And then it says to bind off a certain number of stitches. And um, the amount that's listed there are the amount of stitches that were in between the two, um, in between the two markers. But I'll show you something at the end that is what often can cause some um, confusion when it comes to stitch counts when you bind off in the center of the work like this. But let's go ahead and start binding off all the stitches until you get to the marker. So to do your first bind off, you first actually just need to knit the first stitch. Then you're going to knit the next stitch. Then you're gonna insert your left needle into the front of the first stitch that you knit. So that was the second stitch in on the right needle. So you're gonna insert it just like this and then you're gonna lift it up and over the stitch you just knit. So your bind, that is one stitch bound off. So even though we knit two stitches, we've only actually bound off one stitch. Okay, so let's bind off the next. So we'll knit the next stitch. And then we'll lift this one up and over. And now we've bound off two stitches. So I'll just continue it in this manner until I get to the marker. So I have one more stitch to bind off before I get to the marker. I'll go ahead and remove the marker, but I still have this last stitch to bind off here. So even though I just removed the marker, I still have one more stitch to knit, and then I bind off that last stitch. If you're ever unsure if you bound off too few or too many, you just need to count the number of stitches you have on either side, and they should be equal. Just remember that the stitch here counts towards this side of the garment. So now I'm going to finish this row which in this case, I'm working short row still. And so the instructions say to knit to three stitches before my previously wrapped stitch. Um, and then I do another wrap and turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then I'm gonna show you the first few rows of neck shaping. So now let's take a look at our work. We have our center bind off stitches here and our right front stitches are on this side, on the other side of the bind off gap. Um, and remember right and left are from the perspective of wearing the garment. So this is the right front and this is the left front. So I have my left front stitches here. So at this point, I'm going to be working each left and right front separately up to the shoulders. Since my working yarn is on the left side, I'm gonna be working on the left front first. The pattern says either I can transfer these right front stitches onto a holder, um, which you could do on the next row, because once you get to the end here, then you'll have an opening and you could transfer those onto a holder if you would like. Or the pattern says you could just let them rest on the circular as you're working this side. Um, and that's the method I'm going to use. So now that we're just working on one side of the neck, I'll be showing you how I shape uh, the neckline over here using this sloped bind off method. The next row, um, the first right side row of this front, 
um, says to knit to the last stitch at the neck edge. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've made it to one stitch before the end at the neck edge here. And it says to slip one purl wise with yarn and back. So keeping the yarn in the back of the work, we're just going to insert the right needle into the next stitch, this last stitch here purl wise, and then just slip it onto the right needle, just like that. Then we're going to turn our work. So we're ready to work our first wrong side row. So this next row says to slip two purl wise with your yarn in front. So we're gonna keep the yarn in the front, just where it is right now. And then I'm gonna take my right needle and I'm going to slip the next two stitches purlwise onto the right needle without working them at all. Then I'm going to insert my left needle into the first slip stitch and I'm going to pass it up and over the second stitch as if to bind off, just like that. So that is our first sloped bind off stitch. Then it says to bring the yarn to the back of the work. So I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back of the work between the two needle tips. And then it says to bind off one stitch in the usual manner. So I'm just going to knit the next stitch and then do a regular bind off by lifting the first stitch up and over that stitch I just knit and off of the needle. Then because I'm still working my short rows, it says to knit to a certain number of stitches before the previously wrapped stitch and then do a wrap and turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I just finished that row. Then it says my next two rows will repeat the last two rows. So I'll first knit to the last stitch at the neck edge again. Okay, so I'm just about at one stitch before the end at the neck edge. And keeping the yarn in the back, I'm going to insert my right needle purlwise into that last stitch and just slip it onto the right needle. And then I will turn my work, and just like my previous wrong side row where we were doing shaping, I'm gonna work that sloped bind off. So keeping the yarn in the front, I'm going to slip the first two stitches onto my right needle by going into them purlwise. Then I'm going to insert my left needle into the first one that I had slipped and pass it up and over the last stitch. Then I'm going to bring the yarn to the back of the work and then gonna bind off one stitch in the usual manner. So I'm going to knit the next stitch and then pass this stitch up and over and off of the needle. Then I'll just continue with the rest of my row as instructed, which is to knit a certain amount of stitches before the previous wrap and turn and do another wrap and turn. So the next row um, in the case of this azalea top is row 15. And it says to knit to the last stitch at neck edge again. Okay, so we're at the last stitch. And just like all the previous right side rows, we're going to, with the yarn held in back, insert the right needle into that last stitch purl wise and just slip it onto the right needle. So then I will turn my work. 
Then on row 16, it's similar to the previous neck shaping rows, but just slightly different. In this case, we'll still slip the two stitches purlwise with yarn in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we're still going to then insert the left needle into the first one and lift it up and over the stitch and off of the needle. And then we're still gonna bring the yarn to the back of the work between the two needle tips. But on the previous rows, we had then bound off one additional stitch. But now we're not. That was just the only stitch that we bound off was the one that we just worked. Now we're just going to uh, knit the rest of the row as instructed. So when working sloped bind offs for neck shaping like this, you just need to pay attention each row, whether or not your instructions um, say to bind off that additional stitch or not. Often, such as in Azalea, it will say to bind off that additional stitch just for the first couple of shaping rows, and then after, um, you don't. So it's just something to keep an eye on when you're working this kind of neck shaping. So I'll just continue in this manner, uh, following the instructions in the pattern, and I'll be working short rows on one side, and then working my neck shaping, as I've been showing you on this side. And I'm gonna turn the work just so you can see what it looks like. The slope bind off really creates a nice edge. Um, and it's nice and clean and you won't have to pick up the stitches afterwards because it just looks so nice just the way that it is. So those are the techniques used when you are working front neck shaping um, using my azalea tuck here as our example.